When I was uh, really young, my grandmother would uh, tell me, you know, there is an eagle, a black kite actually. We call it teal in Hindi, and it would make a sound like chia. And my grandmother would be like, Samira, see, it's calling you. So I was surrounded by all these stimuli since I was very young and I noticed uh, these things, all the sounds around me in nature and I wanted to know more about them and that's why I wanted to study bird song. Hi, I'm Samira Agnihotri and I've been studying birds in the Biligiri Rangan Hills for 18 years. At least in India, research on bird song has been very little. We don't even know what the calls of many species are like, the basic calls. I focused on one bird and how it talks to other birds for my PhD, the racket-tailed rongo. I came here as a master's student. This was my first entry into a rainforest and I was floored. When I started my master's research, uh, you know, we walked all over the forest with a mic and a recorder and those were happiest days for me and I was always accompanied by a Soliga person. You can't go into the forest alone, it's dangerous. I was accompanied by Mr. M. R. Madegoda, who was my first field collaborator. One day, we were looking at a racket-tailed rongo and uh, we were mesmerized. So racket-tailed rongos are uh, very, very special birds. Unlike these other birds, the rongos mimic throughout the year, not just in the breeding season to attract mates. That was very interesting. Why does this bird mimic all the time? I've seen racket-tailed rongos hang out with jungle babblers and talk jungle babbleries. Kank, kank to them. They can see that this doesn't look like jungle babbler. Why do they allow it to hang out and do all these things? We realized uh, through years of observation that perhaps one of the reasons why they are mimicking the species that form these flocks is to hang out with them, to make friends with them. And two, because they are very aggressive birds. They don't hesitate to chase away predators that are three times their size, like eagles or owls. So, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. But with a bit of code switching and language mixed in. Code switching is uh, when we switch between different languages in the same conversation. Like now I'm talking English with Hindi or I'm English with Canada. That's all code switching. So that's why the racket tail rongo and the jungle babbler kek in the and the crested serpent eagle do imikri and the shift martha irute. So that is the same way code switching. And the linguistics in linguistics you call it code switching. At some point, I realized uh, I can also speak broken Soliga and that opened up a whole world. It opened up my entry into the community and uh, it made me create new relationships, new friendships that have endured all these years. Uh, I feel especially because I try to speak their language, just like the racket-tail rongo. La le le lo la le so le
The Soliga have many different types of songs and these are not just songs for entertainment these are oral traditions that preserve the ecological knowledge from generation to generation Edu goruka ala aduku ond haadi ide ala goruka ಹಾಡಿದೆ ದೀಸ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ಸ್ don't just mention the bird but they also include things about the bird's behavior what it eats how it calls where it's found all these things are contained in these songs as i was doing this research i realized that it is only the older generations who continue to have this knowledge and as uh, the years go by the younger people are not learning it as much and if that goes away we as outsiders we won't know anything we won't know what to experience in the forest what it contain ಮೊದಲಾದರೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಸೋಲಿಗೆ ಬಸ್ಸೆ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದು ಇವಾಗ ಕನ್ನಡ ಭಾಷೆಯನ್ನು ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಕಲಿತಿದ್ದೋ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲೇ ಎಲ್ಲ ತಿಳ್ಕೊತಿದ್ದೋ ಆಮೇಲೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಾಡಿನ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ಹಿರಿಯ ಸೋಲಿಗರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ತಾತ ಮುತ್ತಾತನ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಯಾವುದು ಗೊತ್ತಿದ್ದಿರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಈಗ ಆದಿ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಸೇರಿಕೊಂಡು ನಮ್ಮ ತಾತ ಮತ್ತು ಮುತ್ತಾತ ನಮ್ಮ ಸೋಲಿಗರ ಪದ್ಧತಿಗಳು ಅವ್ರ ಸೋಲಿಗರು ಹೆಂಗೆ ಜೀವನ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ರು ಆವಾಗ ಹೆಂಗಿದ್ರು ಇವಾಗ ಹೆಂಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ತಿಳ್ಕೊತಾ ಇವಾಗ ಸೋಲಿಗೆ ಬಸ್ಸೆ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗೇ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದೀನಿ so we talk a lot about biodiversity conservation save the species save biodiversity but we should realize that this biodiversity co evolved with cultures such as the culture in the language of the soligas and so now we should really move away from talking about biodiversity conservation to biocultural diversity conservation the ultimate goal would be to at some point move away and just be facilitators and enable the community and their youth to even conduct research on their own forest 